Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I want to talk about something that um, is related to uh, some communications that I've had with some individuals that um, we're talking about training. We're talking about uh, all the different kinds of people that seek out training. And I get this a lot. I have a lot of different kinds of people that come to me. They, they come to my classes. Uh, some stay, some don't. And that's that. I think if you run classes, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, but what is interesting to me is this preconceived mindset that people have about training and what it means. What does it mean to be a student in the martial arts? What does it mean to come to class and be able to practice the art that you're learning? And this is the part I think that is difficult for a lot of people to understand. We live in a society that is very short term. We live in a society where we can just hop on our phones or our computers and in just a few clicks, we can pretty much get whatever we want. Um, and of course, if you can afford it. But even with that, there's so much free stuff out there that, that you can get. So we live in a culture that really has conditioned us to expect our results to happen with minimal effort and to happen very quickly. And that expectation feeds into martial arts training. And there's a whole industry out there that's built around uh, placating this, built around this idea of, you know, learn to get your black belt in 15 months, or, you know, you, from the comfort of your home, you can you can develop all this skill and, and it, just this, all this kind of stuff that really flies in the face of what real martial arts originally were designed as and how people trained. And, and it doesn't matter if you want to get into sports, it's the same process. The idea is that you have to go through discomfort, struggle, pain, difficulty. You have to sacrifice. You have to do things outside the box of your daily life. This is where a lot of people struggle. It's, it, yeah, there's physical challenges, of course, but the biggest challenge is actually what happens in here because we walk into a dojo, most people don't really know what to expect and they have an idea of what they want, but they don't really understand what it takes to get there. Real skill, real um, ability is developed through countless hours of practice. Now, what kind of practice is that? And this is the part that I want to talk about. This is the part that's going to, unfortunately, it's going to chop some rear ends and some people may get their, you know, what's in a bunch, but that's okay. The bottom line is this is reality. I have many, many years, decades of training in martial arts, I've been in law enforcement, been in the military. I've gone through all this stuff. I have real life experience and I don't want to talk about my past, my experience, we all come from different different things and how our martial art means to us can be different or what our martial art means to us can be different and why you train can be different. And that's totally okay. It's a personal journey, I get that. But at the end of the day, you are seeking to learn a martial art. You're not seeking to learn um, some sort of ambiguous, weird kind of guru-esque, all this. It is a martial art. It is martial. It is meant for battle. And it is an art. It is a discipline, a study, a practice of focused intent that takes a long time to get to the level where it is art. And this is where I think people have false expectations that they will show up to class and they enjoy the social aspect. And that's fantastic. We need that, especially right now with COVID, any kind of socialization is good um, if you're coming out of all of that isolation. Uh, and then also community and fellowship, supportive environment, encouraging, that sort of thing. Fantastic, that's great. Um, and then there's also the, um, just the physical component of, of of physical health, right? That you're getting off the couch, you're coming out and you're engaged in something that's moving your body. That's fantastic. That, the social aspect, the physical exercise aspect, all of that is great. But around all of that, the number one reason that people go to class is purely for entertainment. And I know that's controversial, but 
it's the truth. It, based on my experience in dealing with hundreds of people, the majority of people just want to feel good about what they do. They want to laugh. They want to be mentally stimulated. They want some excitement, adrenaline pumping, and all of that is fantastic. And that is a product of, of good martial arts training is that it is fun. That's why we do it. It's exciting and there's adrenaline and all of that. But none of that really gets you anywhere as far as real martial skill. Real martial skill is oftentimes not fun. It's not exciting. It doesn't trigger all of these feel good chemicals. It actually can make you question why you're even training. It can make you face parts of yourself that you really don't like. Maybe you've avoided them. Maybe you didn't even know those parts existed. It tests your patience. It tests your endurance. It tests your ability to handle pain and discomfort. And that is not fun. That's not something that you pay money to voluntarily go experience because you enjoy it. It's a necessary evil. Now, of course, martial artists, we're all sadistic and masochistic. Um, we enjoy delivering pain and receiving pain. It's this weird thing that makes us who we are. But, but at the same time, I mean, honestly, if you're, if you're off to the side and you're practicing just a, a punch, one punch in the air over and over and over again, a thousand repetitions and each time you're, you're being pushed to get lower get lower get you know adjust this foot all this kind of stuff that's not exciting after a while your brain's going to start to wander you're going to be like oh my god you know how long am i going to do this my legs hurt my my hamstrings hurt my all of this and then especially when you're in a mixed class and you see other people in the class laughing throwing each other around doing technique and you're over here in the corner practicing this the singular rote learning exercise that that can be really demotivating. But you have to understand one fact. Your teacher's responsibility is to provide the highest quality training to you. Your teacher's responsibility is not to entertain you. Your teacher's responsibility is to guide you in a direction that you need to go. And I have this quote that I that I came up with a long time ago as a reminder to myself. Um, and I had it written down somewhere that I could see it every day just to kind of remind myself that it, it goes like this. It says, give them what they want so they keep coming back. Give them what they need so they actually grow. And the idea on that is, is what, what somebody needs to grow as a martial artist isn't necessarily what they want. That if all you did was give them what they want, nine times out of 10, they're not actually going to grow because people want to play. They want to have fun. They want to throw each other around, do the big flashy stuff. But the real growth happens from that, from that consistent struggle, that consistent development that requires a honing of skills. And that's the part that people lose their patience with. So I had somebody that um, was training for a while. They left because they were having injuries, uh, not because of the training, but they, they had other kinds of things. Um, and so their bodies were not allowing them to be able to train. And so I was having to customize that training. A lot of solo practice that worked on proper structure, proper balance, proper movement. And for those in the Bujin Khan, um, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about. Basically, I was having this person do a lot of Sanshin no Kappa, um, the Shoshin uh, solo practice, um, a lot of very, very slow, methodical practice because I was having to work around a lot of the limitations this person had. And knowing that them coming into training was going to be first rehabilitative. Before it even gets to building anything, I have to first get their body to learn how to move in a correct way that doesn't um, acerbate or worsen their already existing physical limitations and, and injuries. So it was very, very risky for me to do that as a teacher because if this person injures themselves, there's liabilities that are involved with that. So I have to be very responsible, not just 
to this person to make sure that I'm not hurting them even more. Of course, that's my number one priority. But the second priority is I have to look out for my school and I have to look out for myself to not do something that puts me at liability. So this person uh, left training and then and then now they're seeking to come back, but then they're they're complaining that they want that that they don't want it to be boring, that they want to be um, more engaged in the class and be able to train like the others in class. And that really got me to think because this is not the first time that I've had people do that. I've had people actually leave training because they didn't they they thought they didn't like having to do all of that. But at the end of the day, and this is the point that I was that I made to this person is that at the end of the day, this is a martial art. It, it requires certain skills. It requires certain development of the body. And we all come from wherever we come from. We all start at the level we are. Some of us can be several yards back behind the line of scrimmage. And some of us are, maybe we've, we've lived our lives in certain ways where we have a certain level of athleticism, certain level of health. And maybe we can start at that line of scrimmage and start moving forward from there. But there are a lot of people who are actually far behind that. Their, their lifestyles, they're sedentary or they have injuries or they, they eat a bunch of bad food and then they're overweight and then they have all these other kinds of issues that you have to bring yourself to the starting point. And it begins with preparing the body for training. Training requires the body to do certain things that if the body's not prepared to do those things, that could lead to some really bad problems. One injury can keep you out of training for weeks or months or whatever. So you have to prepare the body. There are martial arts, old traditional martial arts, where you weren't even considered a student yet until you showed a certain level of ability in certain key things. Uh, it could be maybe ukemi, your ability to take throws and, and to be able to, to land on the ground. Um, it could be certain body conditioning, ability to be able to do basic movement exercises, um, certain level of, of conditioning before you would even be shown techniques because they understood that you, you really do yourself no service if you're not preparing your body to be able to perform and receive the training. If you can't take a fall, why am I going to teach you how to throw? So if you can't, uh, you know, if you can't climb a flight of stairs without winding yourself, why on earth would I want to teach you really just a hardcore training like that? The biggest survival skill is going to be your conditioning. If your range of motion is so bad that you can't even execute a very simple, um, you know, Jodan Uke or, or Shdo because you have no range of motion in your in your shoulders. Well, guess where I'm going to start with? I'm going to start with building your range of motion so that you can properly do it. Because if you can't properly do the technique, you're going to build muscle memory based on your level. So if your range of motion is really behind where it should be, I'm not saying you have to be a yoga master, but some cert, some particular level that it has to be, if it's not there and you're not working towards trying to get that, the muscle memory that you're building on those techniques is going to be constrained to that limitation. And that's a really dangerous thing, especially in training when training becomes more intense, training becomes more free and, and movement and, you know, um, it just becomes more, more intense, right? I know I already said intense, but that's when people get hurt. So for those people who are wanting to get into martial arts, I really, really, really encourage you to take a look at A, why are you getting into martial arts? B, what is the training actually involved? Be realistic about it. What is the training actually involved? And what is the path to be able to prepare yourself to be able to do the training? Now, it's very, very normal for people to come in with zero athletic ability, very limited range of motion, very limited conditioning, and that's okay. Through the training, you build that. But when you have real physical limitations or, or injuries and things like that, um, 
you live this really extreme version of an unhealthy lifestyle or you're, you're just you're just really really behind the mark on on any sort of um, starting point to be able to conduct the training safely then I'm not saying you can't train but you need to focus on that focus on preparing your body focus on changing your diet take walks work on your range of motion mobility training that sort of thing um, I'm not saying you got to join a gym and things like that but just start really working toward preparing your body then when you go to class you can start class. If you come to my class, you're welcome. You're going to start class, but you're going to start class in a, in a manner that's going to allow you to continue to develop. I'm not going to just throw you out on the mat and have you start kicking and punching and blocking and throwing people and all this other stuff. It, that's just not going to happen because the risk of injury to you is really high and it's not going to benefit you. You will benefit far more by focusing on the guidance that your instructor is giving you that is going to be based on what your needs are at this point. And if your needs are, you need to work on being able to hold your structure for more than five seconds. If your needs are that you need to practice uh, Jodan Ski or, or Jodan Uke slowly, repetitively, 10, 20, 30 times each side, to help get that motion right, to help develop the body dynamic, to be able to do it. If that's what you need most, that's what you're going to be asked to do. If you choose to not do that, then you are refusing the training that is being offered. And if you're refusing the training that's being offered, then you have no point being in that class. And I'm sorry if that sounds harsh. And I'm trying to be very sensitive. Look, I have lumbar scoliosis. I have one leg a few inches shorter than the other, which is why I have a lot of curvature. I have all kinds of other things that, that life circumstances and former occupations have given me that has created limitations, but I've worked around that. I've applied my efforts in the direction to to work specifically with those areas that those limitations are at. And because of that, at 50, almost 54, I can roll around, be thrown, I can do all the things that the young guys do, but I have to work extra hard to be able to do it. And for, for, for if this is you, if you're the one that's sitting there and you're like, man, you know, I, I want to be able to train, I want to be able to do all this stuff, but look at me, I'm you know, 200 pounds overweight, or I can't, I can't squat. Um, I can't raise my arm past here, all that kind of stuff. Hey, I get you, but understand that your priority, your focus should be on fixing those areas, working with those areas from a rehabilitative mindset. And when you go to class, have a realistic understanding that that is what your instructor is going to focus on as well. Your instructor cares about you. Your teacher cares about your growth. And so they're going to tell you this is what you need to do. And they're going to give you some really good tips and exercises and coaching to help you with that. And it may not be exciting. It may not fit your vision of martial arts training where you go on the mat, you do all this cool stuff, you throw people around. It may not fit that. But you got to look past that. You got to look at it as it's building blocks. You're building up something. You have to deconstruct in order to reconstruct. So maybe you need to deconstruct things through that rote repetitive training so that you can then reconstruct how to move effectively based on the current level and ability that you have. So this is a long process. Training in, in an art, especially like ours, takes a long time, it takes a long time, but if it's done correctly, if it's done properly, your longevity is going to benefit. If you want to learn kick-ass skills in six months, go down and take a sport martial art where you're going to have um, very specific skill sets that are practiced 
repetitively over and over again in conditioning, and then you're going to have the testing environment of sparring and, and matches and things like that. Um, go take a BJJ class, go take a Muay Thai class, and, you know, those kind of things. You're going to learn, you're going to learn effective skill sets. You're going to learn them fairly quickly. But the danger with that is, is that based on your current condition over the years, you could also be really destroying things about yourself. So, and I'm not critical of those arts. I'm just saying that even in those arts, you have to prepare your body for the training. But if you want short-term skill sets, understand that you could be sacrificing that with your long-term effectiveness. So this is why our, our Soke, our grandmaster, is in his mid-80s, uh, late-80s, I lost count, um, and he still is just, I mean, sharp clear his mind sharp and clear his body very healthy you look at uh some of the senior japanese who are in their 60s and 70s and the things they can do are phenomenal because they practice correctly they were shown correct ways to do things when they were younger and they focused on a lot yeah the training was brutal the training was tough but look at them now Con contrast that to uh western martial artists uh, where, you know, they, they do all these hard, blah, blah, blah. and how many of them now have knee braces and they have, you know, bulging discs in their back. They have some shoulder dislocations. They can't lift their arm, can't move their arm. They have, you know, all these health problems in their older years. Whoa. What's the difference? The difference is they weren't focused on the long-term development. They were focused on a short-term result. So, you have to be prepared to go through that. You have to be prepared to deal with the uncomfortable. And I know it sucks at times, but the reward is going to be so worth it. You're going to be so happy that you did that. Um, and, and that's really what, what we want to strive for. Unless you're going to go to war in the next six months, which I, I hopefully that that's not going to happen to you. And unless you're the kind of guy that gets into violent situation, a lot and if that is you I, I think there's some other kind of help that you might need um, to reduce that in your life but if if you're most of us go through life where the biggest risk for us is what we do with our bodies what we put in it and how we live our lives and just driving to and from work every day I mean that, that's our biggest risks in life and so we have to look long term in our training and and taking this approach of methodical training that may be boring, we have to look at it with different eyes. We have to look at it as we're investing in our long-term health. We're investing in our long-term functional ability and our long-term survivability because all these situations I described are also dangers. Even in the case of, of crazy number of auto accidents are going on right now because COVID and people think, oh, open freeways, I'm going to drive 100 miles an hour. And now people are starting to come back to work and engage in society again, but they're still trying to drive like it's open highway. At least where I'm at, the accident rates are through the roof. But your ability to be able to mitigate damage, to be able to adapt and, and not get injured um, is a direct reflection in your training. So there are benefits to all of this. But it has to come from that, that focused training of what you need, not what you want. So I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. If you're offended by anything I said, um, I'm sorry, but I'm not because really I, there's nothing I said that's rocket science or, or that's somehow new, but I think we need to be reminded of these things and we need to swallow our ego about these things, swallow our pride, stop acting like spoiled children and understand that this requires hard work and it requires having to experience pain and discomfort and having to do things that we may not necessarily want to do, but it's what our instructor feels is needed for us because they have the experience and the knowledge. They're the teacher. They're the ones that have walked ahead of us and they themselves have had to go through hopefully, they themselves have had to go through this same process. So, you know, what you're experiencing is not new. So 
Thank you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for following. Please smash that uh, subscribe, like, comment, throw me some thoughts, what you think. Um, you know, how do you be honest if you experience this stuff and, and, and talk about that? Uh, what do you do when, when you're training in class and it's not exciting or boring? What do you do about that? Um, how do you keep yourself engaged? How do you keep yourself motivated when, when, when you're working on something that your instructor showed you that you're just really, it's just not really igniting anything for you? How do you, how do you reconcile that? So share your thoughts on that. Um, and, and definitely send this to somebody you think might need it. Uh, but uh, I hope everybody is doing well. I hope this COVID thing isn't driving people crazy too much. Um, and I hope that everybody's able to train who wants to train, uh, no matter how that is, whether it's solo or in groups or outdoors or however it is, I hope everybody um, has the ability, has, has the resources to so again, thank you so much. And uh, as I always say, no matter what, stay happy, stay healthy, and just keep training.